All right, so today I want to introduce Professor Damon Walker of University of Missouri, St. Louis. I've known Damon for a number of years now. Uh, Damon has an MBA from the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and also a bachelor's in management information systems and a certificate in cybersecurity. Damon has worked with Farmer to Farmer for many years through two NGOs. He has traveled to Nigeria most recently, Guinea, Senegal, and Benin. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an exchange of um, discussions around this particular program. This program is fully funded. It provides students and volunteers to go to a country, work with the Ministry of Agriculture. And again, everything is fully funded and you will do an IT project in two to three weeks. Now you don't get paid for going. However, you did get a per diem. So for example, I went to Senegal for about three weeks. <clears throat> I was given $800. $800 is the equivalent of half a million CIFA in that country. Now, what that allowed me to do, it allowed me to have an outfit made for every day of the week for a month. It allowed me to eat at a really nice restaurant uh, pretty much every day. Breakfast was provided free. Um, and then I had a translator because I don't speak French. It's very little. And they provided lodging, plane ticket, visa, and all that stuff. So everything was taken care of. And I was there to work with their Ministry of Agriculture to do a number of projects. Now, like I said, Damon has done several of these. And Damon, tell us a little bit more about um, how you got involved, why you got involved in this particular program. Okay. So actually, um, thank you for having me. And um, how I got involved in this, uh, actually, uh, Dr. Dawson was a professor of mine um, when I was doing my undergrad in um, information systems. Um, this is how I obtained my certificate in cybersecurity. Um, and Dr. Dawson would talk about uh, these different programs, similar to how he's doing now. And um, an opportunity arose and he asked me, did I want to um, participate um, or I volunteer to go to uh, Guinea at the time? I told him yes, and then the organization called me back. Um, after that, there was an there was an application process that I had. To, <laughs> excuse me, there was an application process that I had to um, complete. But um, it basically was my resume and um, list a list of skills based around um, that particular assignment. Okay, and then, so how can individuals with IT skills <laughs> contribute to these various projects as volunteers, and then what types of roles are available? Uh, first of all, um, the two programs that I know about are through Winrock International. Um, I believe their uh, website is winrock.org, winrock.org. The other organization is uh, Catholic Relief Services, which is uh, crs.org, I believe. Um, on both of those um, organizations' website, they'll have a, a, a option uh, for volunteering. And then once you click through, um, it'll have a list of the assignments that are available and the skill sets needed to complete those assignments. Um, you would select an assignment that you believe that you could, um, that your skill sets um, match, uh, fill out the application, and then a representative from that company will call you and do like a, a brief interview to make sure that you're a fit for that particular um, assignment. Okay, and we'll, we'll step back for a minute. So when you first got the opportunity, were you, tell us your thoughts, like were you nervous were you anticipating going to somewhere very rural or in a city? Like, what have your experience been? And start off from Guinea all the way to Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> when I, my first assignment, I didn't know what to expect. I was actually terrified um, because um, I had, I had been out the country before, but I'd never um, been in a situation where I was helping the citizens of that um, country. So um, 
the first country that I went to was Guinea. Um, I worked with the Department of Agriculture on a um, information systems assignment. Basically, I was teaching uh, the Department of Agriculture how to use Microsoft Office. That's that's the easiest way to explain it. Um, that was a two week uh, project. Um, do you want me to go on to the next project, or how do you? How do you? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so going deeper into Guinea, because you, I believe you're in Conakry, correct? Yeah, Guinea Conakry. Yeah. So, was that rural? Was that um, very industrialized? Like, how was like the use of technology there? Um, it, give us a little bit more depth. Okay, gotcha. So, Guinea Conakry is the uh, capital city of um, Guinea. Um, it is, uh, if I was to compare it to an um, American city, um, as far as busyness is concerned, it would be similar to New York. Um, um, a lot of people um, throughout the day um, walking back and forth or whatever, you know, so th there's it's a high, high populated area, but um, there's not a lot of resources in Guinea, so um, there's pollution. Um, uh, the the roads are not very developed, um, but on the flip side, the the people there are, are um, very friendly, very kind, um, very welcoming. Um, so, I mean, overall, it was a really good experience. But it was uh, those things that I, um, I don't know if I can necessarily say that I prepared for those things, but those were the things that I saw when I got there. And then the other part of it is um, Yeni is a, um, a Francophone um, country. So everyone, the, the majority of the um, population spoke French and I, I knew little to no French. Um, so for that particular assignment, I was given an interpreter, um, a driver, um, like Dr. Dawson also mentioned a per diem to, you know, for my food and, uh, whatever other expenses that I may occur on that trip. Um, my hotel was taken care of, my, um, plane ticket was taken care of. Um, like he said, no expenses out of pocket. Um, I was just there to basically work with the Department of Agriculture to get them up to speed on um, how to use, like I said, basically Microsoft Office. So this particular project, it was like a farmer to farmer um, project. It was uh, they it was listed as the, the training of the trainers. So my my role was to train um, 20 individuals that would go out into the field and train um, for farmers that may be in rural areas on how to collect data um, on the things that they are growing um, or maybe collecting. Um, it could be um, anything related to agriculture, right? So um, farming, fishing, um, any of those things and, and everything in between. So I was showing them how to use these different programs to collect data, to um, present the data, and then, um, you know, analyze the data. Um, but I had a two week um, assignment to teach these 20 individuals how to then turn around and take that material and, and take it into um, the country and teach other people. And I, I remember during this assignment that you said that there was someone high up from the actual government that walked in. Yeah, it's, I can't I can't remember his actual uh, I can't remember his actual uh, title, but yeah, it was there was an opening ceremony where you know everyone stood up and I, I wish I could remember his title right now. Um, but this particular assignment was interesting because the the location that I was doing the training was literally down the street from the president's um, mansion. 
So, I mean, it was, um, it was truly a, a, a government um, assignment. Um, and I got to see, you know, how um, we would be protected in our convoy and, you know, all these different things. So things like that. So it, it seems like what you're saying is that the assignment ha was highly visible. Very visible. Very. Yes. Okay. And then your your next assignment in Senegal. Yeah. So the, the Senegal project, I was working with two, um, how do we, um, like two tech schools. Um, these particular um, schools, they they focused on agriculture, um, but it was like a, um, how do I say it? I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of it right now. But these are like technical schools, but the 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 um the focus of the assignment was to make sure that they were able to attract talent and then also keep um um an account on talent as they went out into the workforce. So um this particular assignment I was working with, I was in um the middle of Senegal, uh um Berkline and in Catherine or the is the area. Um they're pretty close um uh, like neighboring um towns. Um but I was working with those two institutions to help them build a website and then also um a database to to um retain information. Um so that was that particular assignment. Um what what else do you need to know about that one? Yeah, so in terms of the technology differences or capabilities, what were the differences like between um, Guinea and Senegal? Were they very different? Uh, they were slightly different. Um, the level of knowledge when it came to the the programs were a little bit different. Um, in Guinea. Um, a lot of my participants there really hadn't worked with Microsoft Office at all. So I was starting from scratch. Like, um, I mean, I even did a, a, a intro to, to the intro is like, what is a peripheral device? What is a mouse? What is your monitor? You know what I'm saying? Um, what is a click? What is a double click? And then we went into, okay, this is where PowerPoint Excel in, in, Senegal, I didn't have to be that basic. Um, I had to basically um, come in and help them understand what what resources they could use to build a website um, and then help them understand what materials or what verbiage to put on those websites to help attract talent to make the um website look attractive um those things and you spent a little bit of time in Dakar as well right yeah briefly after my assignment was done yeah um I went back to Dakar I was there for oh, I think two days and I was able to do um some shopping um some um sightseeing and um yeah so i went to um i went to the slave island there um i was able to purchase clothing um went to a, a few hotels and the beaches and stuff like that so it was like it was get uh the car was really nice the the beaches were really nice the the area was uh really nice the difference between um, the other parts of Senegal that I was in, like uh, Berkeley and Kafrin, those were like the countryside, the more rural areas. So it was almost like a, a desert, you know, um, areas that I was in when I was doing the training. But um, the last few days I was in the city um, enjoying all the amenities. Okay, and then um, next, Benin, you were in, was it Continu? 
that you're in? Mountain View is where I landed. Um, <clears throat> what is Paraku? Okay, I believe, I believe I'm saying it right. Paraku. Uh, that was a, an assignment working with the cashew producers, um, showing them data collection using mobile devices. So this particular assignment. Um, In the different villages or whatever, so there, there. I think um, Benin is like the third producing, the third um, cashew producing country in the world, and so um, from the village all the way up to the capital, um, cashew is their like their uh, major source of um, agricultural um, income. So. Um, with that being said, um, cashew plants are everywhere, but they're collecting um, they're collecting inventory from the villages all the way up to the cal capital, and that information prior to this um, assignment, all of that information was being processed through paper. So, um, let's say. I guess they speak in, I guess we speak in kilometers. So let's say the, the village is 300 kilometers or so, or, or maybe more from um, the capital city or, of where the, you know, um, the information is, is being housed. This information would have to be transported on paper from that village all the way up. Um, so on this particular assignment, I was showing um this was also a training of the trainers so i was training i think it was 20 plus individuals on this assignment as well how to collect data using mobile devices um so that that information wouldn't be lost in transition because another thing that they were running another problem that they were running into as they were transporting um this information say it rains or um, the, the information wasn't collected properly or, you know, anything can happen, um, a fire or whatever. And then that information doesn't go, doesn't get to where it needs to, to be. And then they don't have proper um, inventory to say what they, what they can and cannot sell, trade or whatever. Um, so that was the, the basis of that particular assignment. All right, and then let's go to your last one. <clears throat> and I think your last one is the most important because it's Nigeria. And so for those that are know, Nigeria has approximately 210 million people. It's supposed to be one of the top 10 populated countries by 2050. And by 2075, it's supposed to be, I think, the world's sixth largest economy. Some are protected, right? So it's, it's, there's a lot going on there. So this country is extremely important. It not only that in terms of the actual people, one out of every four Blacks in the world is Nigerian or Nigerian uh, descent. So it, it has a huge role in the continent. So the last city that you went to, I think it has a metro of about 24 to 26 million people. So give us um, just a view into how things run in Nigeria, especially technology. What were you doing? Please provide that. Um, that particular assignment, that was another assignment, um, use, uh, data collection using mobile devices. Um, I probably need, I probably need to take a step back because, um, in most of these countries, the internet is not readily available, available. So there's, um, like modem cards that, uh, that they use, um, they put a SIM in it and, and, and to get access to the internet or whatever. Um, so um, in that type of an environment, depending on your individual resources, you may or may not be able to afford one of these um, devices. Um, so like I said, this in Nigeria, um, that was another uh, data collection using mobile devices um, along with um, data analysis. Um, ooh, it was 20, 
24 or 26 participants in this particular one. Um, these, once again, training of the trainers, and these individuals were um, collecting information that would go to the market, um, still based on agriculture. So it could be, um, it could be corn, um, fish, cattle, on and on, eggs, whatever. Um, once again, they are collecting information from rural areas to see, you know. Um, what can be what can be sold to the market um once again all of this information was being trans transported um by paper and they needed a way to digitize this um information so um on that particular assignment i showed them how to um create forms to collect data um once the data was collected um analyze the data, also take existing forms that were on paper and then digitize those forms, teaching them data normalization. Um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Now, for those that are listening and watching, I do want to state, like, when you go to these countries, you are the expert. So that's important to remember, like, so you're the expert, right? So if you're going there to develop a database, don't expect to ask them, hey, you know, um, what's needed. They're expecting you to provide the answer. So right. <clears throat> when you're going as a volunteer, um, you're supposed to be already equipped with all the knowledge or be able to grab that knowledge yourself. Now, it was, it was interesting. Dave and I, we've actually, um, I guess you could say we've done prep work together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we we will talk offline but we've done prep work together <clears throat> to make sure that we're able to do things right so we said all right well if we're going to do a database which is it my sequel um, what is the post gray you know what is the best um you know language for implementing this particular database <clears throat> and then also which items were open source because you know there's a limitation in terms of money all right, you say Nigeria, right? One dollar equals what? Almost seven hundred naira. That's a that's a huge difference, because especially when the technology they're buying are from the Western world, it's like they're paying in their currency. It's it's not affordable. So a lot of the times, the solution that we offer, they're open access. <clears throat> they're open access. They're open source. The materials open access. The, the applications are open source, meaning they can freely use it without worrying about having to pay and stuff like that. I'll give an example. In Ethiopia, I had to go there and I was pretty much the, I was serving as the database architect for the entire country for a microfinance institution. And there, you know, a medical doctor makes the equivalent of 500 US dollars. I can't, I don't remember the equivalent, the, um, how to um, take the money and get, uh, convert it to Ethiopian burr, but 500 is like the max, it's, it's the high end. So you can imagine when they're buying items, <clears throat> they are spending the equivalent of multiple doctor salaries per month to get this equipment done. They may spend, you know, $1,300 just to get a five minute answer back to a question from a consultant. So the organizations, they don't have this money. So what USAID does, they say, hey, we understand that agriculture is extremely important in your country. We're going to provide you with a US expert. And remember, when I told you in class, an expert is someone who knows one thing more than the next person, right? That's all an expert is. <clears throat> so they provide an expert, somebody who knows one more thing than them, and that person is to help them um, accomplish their mission, right? And so the interesting thing is what Damon has done, he has went to all these countries, uh, he's done database development design, show them how to capture data, uh, taught them basic computing to more advanced techniques, and he's done all these items in a number of countries, and three out of the four countries are francophone. You know, this is extremely difficult. Um, you know, plus, you know, there there's different religions, obviously. I think three out of you know, well, in the areas like um Guinea, um, Senegal, Benin, they're mainly Islamic countries, even Nigeria, but that's that's in the north. He was in the south, so that's mainly that's like mixed. So there's a lot of different cultural things that you do with as well, but in terms of the experience, it really creates an experience that allows you to understand how to deal with people, right? So here in Chicago, we talk about 
how to deal with people here locally, right? This person's from the north side of Chicago. They're from the south suburbs. You know, they're they're foreign because they're from Indiana. Well, you know, blame those guys. But there, it's a completely different aspect where you're dealing with languages, cultures, religions, et- or ethnic groups. It's very different. You know, not all your interactions are going to be good. Some could be negative. So, you know, in that aspect, I think it's really an enriching experience. So, so for Damon, a question I have for you, like, what do you think the long-term benefits that volunteers can expect to gain from their experience in West Africa, personally and professionally? Um, it short of amazing. Um, I don't. I, I'm trying to think of another word to d- describe it. But as I'm li- uh, as I was listening to um, as I was listening to you describe, you know um the things that you may encounter um one thing that i learned for sure is that i knew more than i actually thought you know um it was it was not until i was put into that situation that um it it felt like a, a a sink or swim like and then if you if you truly are there to help, you want to make sure that you provide that help. So whatever it takes to get the goal accomplished, um, you end up doing and, and 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 it helps you it helps you find out who you actually are as a person. Um and you, it helps you realize that you that you are actually picking up skills that that or making you a pretty amazing person. I think I, I think this is the first time that I pro- probably vocalized that. Um because the the first time that I ex, you know went to um Guinea, I was so um I guess I I'll, I'll call it shell shock that I it took me some time to internalize everything that I had done, but the impact that I had um amongst the participants, it it actually helped me change my um, trajectory in my career. I was actually working in um, corporate America, actually in, in a telecommunications company when I, when I first went to Guinea. And this one experience actually just, it, it, I will say that this one experience actually changed my life because there was one particular uh, person in the class, this one lady, she was really, really, really quiet, but she was always taking notes. And, um, you know, at the end of this particular assignment, that, that was my very first assignment. At the end of that assignment, you know, this 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 lady, she came to me and she was like, uh, she said that she had learned this stuff before, but she never felt comfortable enough to use it. And not only does she feel comfortable enough to use it, um, she felt comfortable enough to teach someone else and at that moment my perspective totally changed I looked at all of those participants in that room and I'm like I just helped 20 families I just helped 20 families feed their families and my my whole um, outlook on IT what I can do within IT um, had totally changed. And, and the way I felt about it is if I could teach and if I could help people in IT and still be in IT, this is the place for me. Now, I'm not saying that that is going to be, you know, your experience. Um, but getting um, experience in these different cultures and um, getting face to face with um the citizens in these different areas it just it it opens your perspective up on humanity you know um what what you learn is what what i learned is um no matter where you go people really just want to live in peace um so it just i don't know it's it's it's, it's transformational so i would I recommend, I would recommend that any and everybody, if you are able to do it, please do it because um, it can open your eyes up to 
you know, the different cultures and and why they do different things. You may have questions that you that aren't answered that once you get on ground um, with the with the citizens of that country, you get those answers firsthand. And um, the other thing that I learned is if you are willing to learn, because I'm I, I didn't speak French at all. I don't I still don't speak French at all. Um, the first three countries that I went to, all of them spoke French. Um, as long as you are willing to to try and learn, people are willing to help. And it's the same thing it, if you are giving back, right? As long as people are willing or and and being receptive to the things that you are trying to give them, you're like, oh man, I'll empty my pockets out for you if I if I can. If it's going to help you to get to a better place, then let's do it. You know. So those would be the things that I would say. Um, you know, it's just it's just very transformation. All right, Dan, you're trying to make people shed tears over here. I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll open it up for questions. So um, we'll spend about 15 minutes for questions, and then we'll stop recording, and then we'll we'll talk can't more candidly. So for 15 minutes, uh, feel free to ask questions. So unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey, Damon, this is Will. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So um, I know you and Dr. Mo is pretty much saying that when it comes to, you know, going to these countries and working with people that were expected to be the subject matter experts. But as you know, with IT, you run into certain situations, you know, which sometimes you don't have an answer to it because you're expecting that to happen. Now, we do run into a situation, you know, in which you're not sure what to do. How do you go about, um, you know, solving that? Since you don't have nobody that you could go to, I know you could like tend to use things, you know, like you could research things online. But have you had those situations, you know, when you was in these different countries? Yes, I have had those situations, and I, honestly, man, you just you just get to the grind. You know what I'm saying? Like it it it's it's going to help you show what you were made of. Like um, the stuff that you learning in the in these programs. Um, research is very important. You know, you you come to you you end up using all of these tools. Um, there were nights in in Senegal in that on that particular project when I was showing them how to do the web, you know, um, create the website and everything. Um, there were nights that I would stay up um, doing research, trying to figure out certain things, um, maybe an hour or two before class, before I went to go, you know, help um, the participants. And then I would go help and then come back to my um, hotel and then just crash out, you know. But um, those those were the, the times where I was figuring out what I was actually made of, you know what I'm saying? So um, you have, usually they'll give you something where you have access to the internet and, um, you know, you can do your research or whatever, but you have the resources to, to get these things done. You just, you have to, you, it sounds so crazy. It almost sounds like, you know, a, like, like a movie coach or something, you know what I'm saying? But you actually, you have to believe in yourself. It's crazy, but it's true. You really have to believe in yourself. Yeah, and then Will, <clears throat> Will, um, you, you know, you can usually reach back like, hey, you know, Mo, I have a question. And I'm like, all right, we'll work on a thing. Because I believe, Damon, I was in Senegal both times you were in Benin. And then in Senegal, I was, yeah, I was in the uh, Dominican Republic doing right. work on doing research out there. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I would, I would get hit up like, OK, this is what I have. This is what we can do. And so we, we do stuff. Right. So we right. all work as a team because at the end of the day, like these organizations trust me that I will provide the best people. Right, exactly. Right. So I no, I had I had more confidence in Damon than Damon had, because <clears throat> when Damon mentioned he wanted to go to Africa to see Africa, I was like, cool. You know, he got a call the next day. And he he called me called me on my personal cell. He's like, uh, Mo, what are you doing? I'm like, oh yeah, you're gonna go. Everything's paid for. You just gotta you know do some work out there. And he's like, oh my gosh, we're, you signing him up for stuff. But right. I I knew that Damon would be able to figure the stuff out. Because one of the things that I harp on that I, well, I guess you could say I, I really discuss is that you have to be able to, um, you know, analyze situations and figure out a solution. 
Like you can't figure, you can't think or assume that you go to a class, you've learned to answer. Okay, you learned one way to do something. There's many ways to do stuff. Like when I teach class, I'm like, look, you learn something, but there's like hundreds of ways to do the same thing. You need to think about what works best for you. And in other situations, there will be another implementation that needs to work for this particular situation. And so doing knowing that, I knew that Damon would be go out there, he would be successful. And, you know, there are times that you may have to hunker down, even myself, like when I went out to Ethiopia <clears throat> and I served as the database architect or whatever, I didn't realize how bad the situation was. I was like, oh, Lord, this is a really bad situation. And so now I'm trying to like calculate speed, how data is being transmitted, what needs to be done. Um, you know, at the last minute, <clears throat> they wanted to mimic the actual um, paying system in uh, Kenya called M-Pesa. So I was like, okay, this this is a lot you guys want in this short period in two weeks. So I'm trying to work all that. Plus, it was Ethiopian. It was their New Year, so they Ethiopians they have 13 months. So I had their New Year, their Christmas. It was a lot, um, but I was able to get through it because a lot of times when you see these particular assignments, they're very broad. We need you to do database, uh, design a database, <clears throat> and then you get there, you talk to the people, you figure out like the one thing they wanted is really like 10 things. Right, it's really ten things. It's like, wait a minute, you said you wanted a date, you wanted database uh, design, and you like myself and and Damon and others that went, we would do most of the work before going. So you do most of the work before going, so it makes it really easy. But you get there and they're like, um, could you help me out with this or that? One of the issues in Senegal is <clears throat> they have a department that does IT for the entire ministry. The problem is that they're backlogged uh, about a year and a half. And that becomes the issue. So just to piggyback that real quick. Um, also, like in each one of these assignments, the, the first day um, when I'm going to talk to these organizations, similar to what Dr. Dawson was just saying, I would go in and I would basically interview them to, to analyze what it is that they actually wanted. Now, I would prepare as much as I possibly could, but... Um, like he said, once you get there and you listen, you you're on the ground and you listening to act what they actually want. It may be totally not totally different, but slightly different from what you prepared and you have to make adjustments. So you have to be agile, you know. Um, and like another thing, Dr. Dawson said, <laughs> um, I would, you know, if if I ran into different things and in and in, in, like I had brain fog, I would I would hit them up like, hey. This is what's going on. This is what I'm thinking. Tell me, am I on the right track or am I not? Should I be? What else should I be thinking about? And most, all the time, I would I wouldn't say most of the time. Each time, Doctor Dawson would you know help me get on the right track. Maybe think about this. Maybe look into that. Maybe look into this. And then he'll give me an attaboy and go for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because, you know, I always say life's a journey, right? And so this whole experience is good because say you're trying to build up your resume and you're trying, you're looking for jobs, you're actually working on a project. You're the tech person. So now on your resume, you're like, hey, I worked on this project with this ministry. Um, I did this. You know, this particular head of this ministry came in, we spoke, you give out certificates. I mean, it's it's really, you're barely being thrust and entrusted into a role <clears throat> at a mid a senior level role immediately. And that's the beautiful thing. Now, I do want to mention the other um, brown bags we have. Next week, we have cognitive warfare. We have cybersecurity in Tunisia. We have a resume workshop. We have a cybersecurity um, training uh, brown bag. And so we have those. And so we have like several more before the year is out. So I just want to let you guys know that we're going to be doing these throughout. So I'm going to stop recording. We're going to pause recording. And then we'll be able to talk more candidly.